Hey YouTube, Nick here. I'm going to be putting together a short playlist, roughly 10 videos, going over and showcasing some of my Commander EDH decks. I'm looking for feedback from the community as far as what to put in, what to take out, maybe some combos that I'm overlooking. Not looking for janky combos, I don't want any insta, insta kills or insta wins, just fun tabletop combos. I am not really a, a very competitive gamer, um, other than at my kitchen table. So hopefully you'll get some ideas from seeing what I have in my deck, maybe some things you haven't thought of as well that you can try out in your deck. So if this is something that you're interested in, please go ahead and subscribe um, to my channel so that way as the new videos come out, you can, uh, you can see them right away. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, etc., you know where to where to put them. Just go ahead and stick it down in the comments, and I'll get to it as, as quickly as I can. Um, the breakdown for this deck, as you can see, it's Erebos, God of the Dead, Mono Black. I am running one Commander, one Planeswalker, six Enchantments, seven Instants, nine Artifacts, nine Non-Basic Lands, 13 Sorceries, 25 Creatures, and then finishing it off with 29 basic lands for a total of uh, 100 cards for EDH. So, Airbos, if you've ever played him, he is just a beast. Um, the indestructible ability is very hard to deal with, both as an enchantment, as a creature. My favorite ability of his is your opponents can't gain life. So that means that you can still gain life, and I love to abuse that feature as much as I can. You'll see some cards in here that really play off that. The card draw is another awesome ability. I uh, You'll see a lot of those in here as well. Anything to pay life to draw cards, I'm all for it. Um, and then the devotion, turning him into a creature just to swing for five or more is, uh, is a little bonus as well. So he's only four to get in, so he's fairly easy to get on the board as quickly as possible. Soren, as stated, he's my only Planeswalker. He's in here pretty much just to bring opponents down to 10. So drop him, negative 3, target opponent's life total becomes 10. I do use the other abilities when and if I can, but pretty much he's just to take care of the person at the table that's gaining ungodly amounts of health. He also, uh, having the 3 black mana in his converted mana cost is great for helping me get my devotion for Erebos. Phyrexian Arena, another, uh, or this is a, a card draw. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card, lose a life, also two for Devotion. These, uh, this is the start of the enchantments. Dark Prophecy, similar to Phyrexian Arena, except for in this case, um, when a creature dies, I'm drawing a card and losing a life. This is three for uh, um, Devotion cost. Dictator, Dictate of Erebos, whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacks a creature. I like that ability. I have some creatures that I bring in specifically for the ET, ETB sack effect, so that really plays well off this card. And then having the flash effect is nice too, so if I lose a bunch of creatures, I can flash this in just to get the, um, kind of clear out some of the other uh, big ickies on the, on the board. Pestilence. One of my favorite cards in the deck. Um, the one downfall is if there are no creatures in play, you have to sacrifice it. But I absolutely love this card because of the fact that Erebos lets me gain life and my opponents can't. So if I can play some of the cards in here to get an upper hand on my opponents as far as life totals and then get some of the other cards that enable me to generate a lot of mana, I can basically just nuke the board with this with this card so super fun in this deck i used to run pestilence demon um he may get back in here but as of right now i like the low mana cost on this and it's an enchantment a little bit harder to deal with underworld connections um just swing or attach this to a land tap pay a life draw a card also helps me for the devotion grave pact another um sack engine here well, not really a sack engine, but another card to uh, get 
opponents to sacrifice their creatures. So whenever a creature I control is put into graveyard from play, everybody sacks. Three towards devotion. Great enchantment. Cool art on this one. Now we're moving into instance. This is probably my favorite instant in the deck just because it's so funny when I get a chance to kill somebody with it. Um, if I can get through and hit somebody with a creature, pay X life, target creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn. Sometimes if I'm able to just go wild with a life gain, I'll just one shot somebody with this card if I can get someone through. Wake the Dead. This is a uh, good defense card. You can only cast it during opponent's turn. Return X creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. You've got to sack those at the beginning of the next step, but hopefully you get some cool ETB effects as well as being able to uh, ward off an attack. Sudden Spoiling, another great defense card. Um, a lot of times people don't expect this. Turn all their big fatties into 0-2. They lose all abilities, and then you just chop them down. Go for the throat. Um, just a good uh, creature kill. Um, I thought about replacing it, but uh, for only two, get to destroy an artifact creature. Cool artwork. So as of right now, it makes the cut. Shred Memory, another great card in my opinion. Um, I never use the remove up to four target cards in a single graveyard from the game. I'm always using the Transmute. A lot of times I'm using that to fetch up Black Sun, Exsanguinate, um, I guess go for the throat if I really need it. But anything of uh, two converted mana cost, I'll use Shred Memory to fetch it up and then, and then play it. Faded Return, kind of a fun little uh, annoying instant when it goes off. Get a big icky from uh, Graveyard that gains Indestructible. And as a little bonus, you get to Scry too. It is a high converted mana cost, but when it goes off, it's fun. Hero's Downfall, just a Destroy Creature or Planeswalker card. Great uh, great spot removal. Moving into Artifacts, we have uh, Nevin Rolls Disc. Probably butchered the pronunciation, but close enough. It's what I call it. Comes in tapped. That is a downside, but for one in a tap, you get to destroy all Artifacts, Creatures, and Enchantments. It can help you get rid of some of those uh, pests on the board. Expedition map. This is great for getting that uh, whatever land you're needing. Um, Nykthos, Urborg, etc. The key here is that you get to search your library for a land card, not a basic land card. So whatever, you, whatever you're looking for, just fetch it up with this. Lash Wraith, because why not? I'm playing mono black. Um, each creature gets plus one, plus one for each swamp I control. Just keep strapping it up to whatever's alive get that on uh, get that on your boss and just swing for lethal command damage if i can get him through sun droplet this is a great card um i try to use this card in any deck that i can just because uh i'm usually usually i'm getting hated out <laughs> so anything to help me uh gain a little bit of survivor survivability i am a fan of so with this, every time you're dealt damage, you just put counters on it. Um, for each player's upkeep, you remove a counter, and you gain a life. So the more, the merrier. The more players that are at the table, the easier it is to gain life or gain your health back, especially if it's just one or two people attacking you and there's six people playing. Um, so two turns getting attacked, but every turn gaining at least one life back. Good old Whip of Erebos. Got to have it in here. After all, this deck is his. Um, creatures have lifelink, and then you can use the 4 ability to get a creature card from your graveyard. Got to exile it, but it does gain haste, and you can get some cool ETB effects. And 2 for devotion. Soul Ring, everybody knows what that does. Tapping for 2. Hoping to get that turn 1. Crystal Ball, I really like this card. Um, Pain 1, Scrying 2, just a good, uh, good way to filter the deck get down to uh, just get the cards out of there that you don't need so highly highly recommend this card cage sun another favorite given all my creatures plus one plus one and then whenever a uh, land taps for mana i'm doubling it so great way to ramp here it does cost six to get out but once it hits the board you just get just things just get achy Mimic Bat, this is probably another one that everybody is familiar with. 
Um, as soon as a creature dies, you just imprint it on Mimic Vat, paying three and tapping Mimic Vat, getting a copy of that creature. So you can really abuse ETB effects, gain in haste with it. You can uh, kind of cheat that last part there, exile it at the beginning of the next in step. So if you, if if I've read the errata correctly, you can do this ability at the end of somebody else's turn because they've entered, once they've entered their in step, and then on your turn, you wouldn't have to, so you'd basically get to keep that creature through your turn. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's how this works. All right, moving into non-basic lands. First thing we have here is Bajuka Bog. Um, this is just for dealing with... Uh, players that use recursion or like to filter a bunch of cards into their graveyards and try to do something sneaky with it. This shuts that down. Reliquary Tower, um, no max hand size. This is kind of in here just because of the meta at my uh, at my table. Um, so yeah, that's why it's in here. I could probably substitute that out with something better, but as of right now, that's that makes the cut. Polluted Mire. Have this in here to cycle. So if I uh, if I'm good on mana, I'll just pay two, pitch it, draw a card. Burborg, this is great for uh, turning all. Each land is a swamp in addition to its other land types, so that works well with Lash Wraith. I think um, Corrupt it works well with. A few other cards in here that this can this can play off of. Good old Crypt, paying two and tapping it. Um, adding a black mana to your mana pool for each creature card in your graveyard. I got 25 creature cards in this deck, so I usually uh, usually that pays for itself. Strip mine. I got this in for, here for destroying. Uh, oh gosh, what's the card? Lifelink, Death Touch. Oh, not coming to me right now, but destroying that. Cassigs. I mean, you name it. Any any land that's annoying you, this can take care of it. Baron Moore. Another cycler, paying a black, pitching it, drawing a card. Nykthos, um, paying two, choosing a color, black obviously. Adding uh, mana to my mana pool for the color chosen, um, equal to my devotion color, so that would uh, that one works well in this deck. Leech Ridden Swamp, this is actually a fairly new addition. Um, Really like this card mainly because of the flavor, but it is fun to uh, pay one and make everybody, each opponent lose a life. I can only activate it if I have two or more black permanent permanents, but uh, usually Erebos is on the board because of the indestructible ability, so it only t only takes one more to activate it. It's pretty easy to actually get that ability going. Then next we're moving into sorceries. First up is Black Sun's Zenith. Um, to an X, basically using this to get rid of those indestructible creatures. Just uh, um, I got a bunch of mana, tap it, and essentially just wipe the entire board. Ruinous Path, another uh, spot removal, destroying target creature or planeswalker. I guess if you really want to, you can use the uh, use the Awoken. Decree of Pain. Destroying all creatures can't be regenerated. Then you get to draw a card for each creature destroyed. That is awesome when you can do that, but it is expensive at 8 converted mana cost. So I typically I don't get to do that. A lot of times I'm just cycling it for 5, um, giving everything negative 2, two negative 2 to uh, kill everything that's small and then kind of soften, soften everything else up for a turn. Guild. Um, I have this in here for early game, um, also good for dealing with indestructible or something that's, uh, yeah, I guess indestructible. Um, basically just exiling it, putting a artifact into play that I can sacrifice for a mana. Fun little card. Mutilate. All creatures get negative one, negative one for each swamp. So again, another card that plays well with Urborg. Another board wipe for four. Ashes to Ashes, awesome black spell removal. Remove two target non-land, excuse me, non-artifact creatures from the game. It does deal five damage to you, but most times it's worth it. Damnation, the uh, Black Wrath of God, destroy all creatures, can't be regenerated. You see that a lot in black decks. Uh, extinguish all hope, another destroy all 
creatures, not enchantment creatures. I have a lot of uh, a lot of board wipes in here again because uh, mainly because of my meta. Um, so yeah, that works works well for that. Corrupt, dealing damage equal to the number of swamps you control to target creature or player. Then I'm gaining life equal to the damage dealt. So just another way to get ahead in life totals. Rise of the Dark Realms, that's a definite finishing card. Um, put all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. So if somebody doesn't have an answer or a board wipe, you pretty much just destroy everyone when it gets back to your turn. Exsanguinate. Um, <laughs> some people's favorite card. Another card that uh, a, lot, a lot of people also hate. Um, two mana and X. Each opponent loses X life, and you're gaining a lot of life, especially if you have uh, some of those uh, double mana generators, and there's a lot of players. Siphon Flesh. This is a good equalizer. Um, making everybody else sack a creature. You're getting a 2-2 zombie for each um, each creature destroyed that way. Soren's Vengeance. I have this in here just because uh, Soren's in here, so for flavor I figured I had to add Soren's Vengeance. Plus you get to deal 10 damage and gain 10 life. Always fun when you kill somebody with it. Alright, moving into creatures. Oh, it looks like we got... Uh, he's upside down. Let's flip him back here. So, Nizumi Grave Robber. Pay and two, remo removing target card in an opponent's graveyard from the game. If no cards are in the graveyard, you get to flip them. I'll do that. And he turns into Night Eyes the Desecrator. Pay and five, putting target creature card in a graveyard into play under your control. So, super awesome card um, because you don't have to tap. You just keep paying five. If you have a way to generate additional mana, you can get multiple creatures, multiple ETB effects, and just basically go crazy with this guy and whoever he brings in. Um, Dothy Trapper. I really like this guy. <laughs> um, makes it really fun, I guess. Uh, a good troll card is probably actually why I have him in here. Basically, you're tapping him. Target creatures gaining shadow until end turn. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll give somebody this creature shadow on their turn and just kind of see what they do with it, especially if they're fighting somebody um, and I want to uh, sway the uh, sway the battle one way or another. So again, good troll card. I can also use it to give my commander um, shadow. So if I can get him equipped up with Lash Wraith and give him shadow, it's uh, pretty pretty hurtful. Belthor the Defiled, have him in here for the 3 ability, removing him from the game. Each player returns all black and red creature cards from his or her graveyard to, to play. Um, I've contemplated taking him out just because that is kind of situational. It doesn't, I don't always want that to go off, but he is, it is a fun card when it works out for you. Primordial, this guy is just a, another beast. Um, when you drop him, you get to, for each opponent, get a creature card out of their graveyard, put it into play under your control, so you're looking for anything that's got uh, good ETB effects that you can just uh, abuse. Get him on uh, get him on Mimic Vat and just go crazy. The Harbinger of Night. This is a pretty weak creature, actually, but I do like him. Um, another creature that's probably on the potential cut list, but I do like him as an early drop. It kind of he's a deterrent to keep people from playing cards while I build up. Um, basically, during your upkeep, putting a negative one, negative one counter on each creature. So if people have low low health creatures, keeps them from putting them out. And just creatures in general, they don't want to see him get stacked up with negative one, negative one counters. At least till he kills himself. Good old Gary. Another life gain card here based on devotion. Uh, Grave Merchant set states that uh, when he enters the battlefield for each opponent, they lose X life where X is the devotion to black, and then you get to gain life equal to that life that was lost. So good way to get uh, way ahead of people in life in life totals. Grave Titan, another uh, great card. Um, awesome art. 
every time he enters the battlefield or attacks, you're getting a 2-2, two, 2-2-2 two, 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 two black zombie creature tokens out of the deal. So stick him on Mimic Vat and not too long get yourself an army of zombies. And he's 6-6, six, six, Death Touch. Ogre Slumlord, another deterrent card. I like him to uh, just pump out Death Touch rats to kind of keep uh, keep other people's armies at bay. Typically, they don't want to sacrifice him to my 1-1 one, one rat. King Makar, um, I just think this card's funny. That's why I have it in here. Um, a lot of times, I'll uh, attack anybody I can get through on, or even if I can't get through, I'll try to negotiate to... Uh, to keep them alive so that way I can pop other people's creatures, turn them into gold statues that I can sack for mana. Good trolling card. Flesh bag, he's in here just to uh, early early drop even the battlefield. Everybody gets creatures out and I'm kind of sitting there dirtling. I'll get flesh bag out and make them all sack creatures. Chainer, another, another one that's in here for the three ability. So paying three black mana and three life, putting a creature card from a graveyard into play under your control. Creature is black and a nightmare in addition to its other creature types. Um, bonus here again is you don't have to tap. If you got that mana and life, you just keep paying it. One downside is when he leaves play, you lose all your nightmares, but still totally worth it in my opinion. Zathrid Gorgon kind of goes along with my King Makar card. I just like to petrify people's creatures so they can't do anything. It turns them into defender and uh, colorless artifacts with um, that can't activate their abilities. So fun card to just troll people with and uh, kind of neutralize some of those big ickies. Sangromancer. This is in here for life gain. Um, whenever a creature an opponent controls is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, I'm gaining three life. And whenever an opponent discards a card, gaining three life. Nephorox. Um, cool ability here. Whenever he attacks alone, defending player sacks a creature, so I like to use him just to swing and get rid of uh, somebody's got a uh, single creature on the board that I can't deal with or just want to get rid of. Just swing Nephrox in. Slum Reaper, similar to Flesh Bag, enters the battlefield. Everybody sacks a creature, so another fun one to get on Mimic Vat. Um, most people probably know this, but if Slum Reaper or Flesh Bag comes in and you don't have any other creatures, you do have to sacrifice that creature. So it actually kind of combos well with Mimic Vat. You play Slum Reaper or Flesh Bag, everybody sacks, you sack your creature, you imprint that onto Mimic Vat, and you just rinse and repeat. Oops. Blood Artist, another life gainer, early drop life gainer. Um, whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life, you gain one life. Blood Gift Demon, just a big flying beater that uh, gives me card advantage. Beginning of your upkeep, target player draws a card and loses a life. I always target myself. Unless I guess somebody's at one health, I would. Uh, that would be funny to kill somebody that way. <laughs> Helldozer does a lot of work for me. Um, paying three and tapping, destroying target land. If it's a non-basic, you just basically keep on going. So that's uh, get rid of a lot of nasty lands and just kind of cripple somebody with uh, with Helldozer if you get him out at the right time. Royal Assassin. He's there as a uh, hopefully early drop and deterrent to keep people from uh, swinging. Um, even if people are fighting other players... Um, a lot of times I'll just royal ass him on my turn <laughs> just to kill him <laughs> and then get it untapped and be ready to go again. So I like to I like to use him if I can, even if it's against somebody that's not fighting me at the time. Dread. Little, I like this card. Um, gives me three towards devotion, and I like his ability. Whenever a creature deals damage to you, destroy it. So another good deterrent to keep people from attacking you. Plus he's a 6-6 six, six with fear. Magus of the Mirror, in case somebody did somehow get way ahead of me on health, um, I can use this guy to kind of change the, uh, swap it around. He does come in tap, so he has to survive for a round, but once it gets back to my turn, all i got to do is tap him and, and swap life totals. So I like this guy. I've used him, uh, I've used him a couple of times. Optheomancer, another uh, snake generator. At the beginning of each upkeep, if they're if I control most snakes, I get a 1-1 death toucher onto the battlefield. 
another great card. Sheila Dread, she's just uh, just a nasty, nasty creature. Swamp Walk 6-6, six, six. the beginning of your upkeep, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So whatever's the biggest and ickiest with the best ETB is usually coming in. And then at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacks a creature. So basically if Sheila Dread is on board and isn't dealt with, it doesn't take, doesn't take too long before, uh, before you're basically winning the game. Magus of the Coffers, um, paying two, tapping, getting a black mana for each swamp you control, so great mana generator there. Skin Render, when Skin Render enters the battlefield, you're getting three negative one, negative one counters to distribute. Um, I like to get Skin Render and to mimic that if I can, um, just, to, just to keep distributing those negative, or those three negative one, negative one counters. And last but not least, just to show that it's in here, Basic Swamp. Got 29 of those, so that uh, that gets us to our 100 cards. So thanks for viewing. Um, hopefully you got something useful out of this. I am looking forward to comments. I'd love to hear others' opinions um, and uh, see how we can improve on this. Again, hopefully uh, some of you viewers got ideas on how to improve upon yours. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If... Uh, if this is something you're interested in, I will be posting other videos, so please go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, uh, have a great day.